Sorry we missed you for Cinco de Mayo, but you've always got Taco Tuesdays to look forward to, right? We suggest giving this chicken tinga recipe a try, along with, of course, some fresh chips and salsa. Check it out. You're going to begin by making a guajillo salsa. This goes great as a dip for chips, but it also works great for enchiladas and other sauces like that. So, you're going to get about 15 to 20 guajillo chilies. Go ahead and de-stem them and get all of the seeds out. Repeat this with the rest of your chilies and then set them aside. Go ahead and get four to five cups of water boiling. Add half of a white onion and all of your dried chilies and simmer those stirring occasionally for 20 to 25 minutes until the chili flesh has softened and the water is deeply and darkly colored. Add the solids to a mixer or blender with about one and a half to two cups of the cooking liquid. Season that with some fresh cracked pepper, a heavy pinch of salt, and one or two fresh cloves of garlic. We're gonna blend this thoroughly for one to two minutes until it is very smooth. You can strain it if you want to, but I like the chunky texture of the seeds. And we're gonna add in half of one tomato, or the whole tomato if it's very small. Go ahead and get the lid back on and blitz that up again for about 30 seconds but we still like to have a little tomato texture in the salsa. Add that to a small saucepan over medium low heat. Add in one to two bay leaves. Stir that bay leaf in and simmer this for 10 to 15 minutes to let all the flavors get to know each other. After that time, get the bay leaf out, get your salsa into a bowl. We're gonna add two final seasonings here to balance the smokiness and heat from the chilies. That would be the juice of one lime and about a quarter cup of fresh chopped onion. Go ahead and let that cool to room temperature or pop it in the fridge. And we can begin work on our roasted habanero and tomato salsa. This one is a little spicy, so make it at your own risk. Maybe substitute the habaneros for jalapenos if you're spice averse. We're gonna take two habaneros and three to four Roma tomatoes. Go ahead and cut those Romas in half down the middle and get them cut side down onto a baking dish. No need to cut the habaneros, just drizzle everything with a little olive oil, move everything around on the pan with your hands, and pop it under the broiler for five to 10 minutes or until the skin starts to blister and the tomatoes are soft. Pull all that out and add all of that, along with any accumulated liquids and juices in the pan to a blender. One, let's say two cloves of fresh garlic and blend that into a pulp. In a small saucepan, we are going to add about a quarter cup of white onion over medium heat. Add in our salsa and about a quarter cup of water. I somehow forgot to film that, but you need that for the texture, otherwise this gets too thick from the pectin in the tomatoes. Simmer that over medium low heat for about 10 to 15 minutes. Let it cool and add in a handful of fresh chopped cilantro and you've got yourself a roasted habanero salsa. Now, we need something to dip in these salsas, and may I suggest a chip? You can certainly buy them in a bag, but homemade are much better and crispier, as you'll see and hear in a minute. So, get those tortillas, these are corn, cut into halves, quarters, six, whatever you want, fan them all out, and then heat up some oil, corn oil, vegetable oil, whatever, in a large flat skillet to about 325 degrees. Fry these, moving them constantly for one to two minutes until they start to turn golden brown and very chip-like. Drain them on a paper towel and repeat as needed with your other chips. Once drained and cooled, toss them into a large bowl, season generously with salt, and you can stop there, but I like a little fresh lime zest on my chips. So, zest of one lime goes in. That was 10 tortillas or about 60 chips in total. Give that a nice toss. As always, I'll put all the instructions and ingredients down below for you, as well as on the website. Let's move on to our chicken tinga. Two large chicken breasts, get some olive oil, a fresh cracking of pepper, a fresh sprinkling of sea salt. These are gonna go into a 400 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes or until cooked. Once they're cooked and cooled, we are going to shred them as finely or as not so finely as we choose. And this is a great point to stop and recommend that you can always use store-bought chicken, rotisserie chicken, leftover chicken, or any other proteins that you have sitting around in your fridge for this recipe. The other ingredients will be one half of one white onion, which we are going to finely mince, as well as two to three cloves of garlic, which will get the same mincing treatment. 
Now into a skillet, about a tablespoon of oil goes in along with our onion and our garlic. We're gonna saute that over medium heat for four to five minutes until they start to go translucent, at which point we're gonna bring on some seasoning here, a little bit of cumin, a little bit of oregano. I'll put all the exact ingredients and instructions down below for you, as well as on the website. Got a 14 ounce can of fire roasted tomatoes, which I'm going to add about maybe two thirds, let's call it 10 ounces of canned tomatoes. And here's where you get to be yourself. Chipotle peppers are a little spicy, so I'd start with one or two, and if you're feeling frisky, as I am, make it four. Go ahead and stir that around to start warming all those ingredients through, and add in about a quarter cup of chicken stock or water. Cook that over medium heat until everything is warmed through, and the vegetables are nice and soft, and then add it to a blender. We've been giving this thing a workout today, I know. Go ahead and blitz that up until it is nice and smooth, and then we're going to return it to our pan. Make sure it's not like over high heat like this is, things start to splatter. At this point, we are going to very thoroughly incorporate our chicken into our sauce and just let it warm up and cook through for five to 10 minutes until all the chicken is nicely coated, any excess water and liquid is cooked out, and we are, well, just unable to wait any longer to eat. In order to eat that, we are going to need some tacos. And you could use hard shells, you could use flour, but I think corn is traditional, so I'm gonna wrap a few of them up in some foil, toss them in a warm oven for eight to 10 minutes, and then it's time to plate this meal up. You can always keep them in the oven while you're working on other components of your dish. They'll stay nice and warm and pliable and ready for you. So because corn tortillas tend to be a little bit more fragile, I recommend using two per taco. If you're using flour, you can probably get away with just one. A nice generous portion of our tinga chicken goes onto the taco shells, and now it's time to gussy these up. First thing I'm going to do is sprinkle over a little bit of very finely chopped cilantro. You can use parsley if cilantro tastes like soap to you. As always, a little bit more fresh raw white onion. Some crumbled cotija cheese or queso fresco would work fine here. And finally, a nice squeeze of lime to bring everything together. So, this is an awesome plate of food that will certainly rival anything you can get at your local cantina or Mexican restaurant. These chips are, well, they're delightful. And the crunch factor, um, just listen. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that salsa, is it's got a kick to it. So, um, fair warning if you don't like spicy stuff. Maybe avoid the habanero one, but I personally loved it. That guajillo salsa has a great smoky flavor. As I said, it would be great as an enchilada sauce. And these tacos are amazing. They're thick, they are packed to the brim, bold, bright, spicy, citrusy flavors. I gotta go in. I was speechless then, and honestly, I am right now. The only thing I can say is, this is a damn good recipe that I hope you will give a try. Make it your own as always, and also as always, Go make something delicious.